To see our Earth from space is an experience only a few men and women have ever had. Their words are an inspiration for all humanity. In space, one has the inescapable impression that here is a virgin area of the universe in which civilized humans, for the first time, have the opportunity to learn and grow without the influence of ancient pressures. This beauty consists of subtle nuances, as in the miraculous balance of soft and brilliant hues. Only a child in his innocence can apprehend the purity and splendor of this vision. Before I flew, I was already aware of how small and vulnerable our planet is. But when I saw it from outer space, in all its ineffable beauty and fragility, I realized that humankind's most urgent task is to cherish and preserve it for future generations. For those who have seen the Earth from space, and for the hundreds and perhaps thousands more who will, the experience most certainly changes your perspective. The things that we share in our world are far more valuable than those which divide us. I knew that when I returned to Earth, never again would I see it looking like a multi-hued, sunlit colored globe, nor the fantastic violet flashes of lightning shimmering against the blue-black night of the planet. I wanted to remember everything I could see or feel in space so that I could keep it with me for the rest of my life. As I looked down, I saw a large river meandering slowly along for miles, passing from one country to another without stopping. I also saw huge forests extending across several borders and I watched the extent of one ocean touch the shores of separate continents. Two words leapt to mind as I looked down on all of this, commonality and interdependence. We are one world. From space, I saw Earth, indescribably beautiful with the scars of national boundaries gone. During a space flight, the psyche of each astronaut is reshaped. Having seen the sun, the stars, and our planet, you become more full of life, softer. You begin to look on all living things with greater respect, and you begin to be more kind and patient with the people around you. During the eight days I spent in space, I realized that mankind needs height, primarily to know better our long-suffering Earth, to see what cannot be seen close up, not just to love her beauty, but also to ensure that we do not bring even the slightest harm to the natural world. After an orange cloud formed as a result of a dust storm over the Sahara and caught up by air currents, reached the Philippines and settled there with rain, I understood that we are all sailing in the same boat. For the first time in my life, I saw the horizon as a curved line. It was accentuated by a thin seam of dark blue light, our atmosphere. Obviously, 
This was not the ocean of air I had been told it was, so many times in my life. I was terrified by its fragile appearance. We went to the moon as technicians. We returned as humanitarians. The first day or so, we all pointed to our countries. The third or fourth day, we were pointing to our continents. By the fifth day, we were aware of only one Earth. As the journey neared its end, I would look at the Earth as it would be gliding underneath me and think, how everlasting all this is. After I am gone, and my children, and my grandchildren, our Earth will still be gliding through the eternity of space in its measured, unhurried way. <laughs> 